welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the Bishop. It's the Tier 5 British SPG. This one is located on the north spawn of Lakeville and it's under the command of M5 Multitronic Unit. And the battle has started straight away without a countdown. And we're off. Now, in order to get the engine noises, we had to... Uh, Press reset, and that means that the tracks aren't working. Yes, thank you, Wargaming. You, your latest client seems to uh, take away some of the realism instead of add to it. Well, the Bishop is armed with a 4.5 inch howitzer, capable of doing 450 alpha, and it'll penetrate through 28 millimeters of armor. And the standard reload time is 12.37 seconds, but I think the M5 Multitronic unit has got that down to just over 10 seconds or thereabouts well actually we might get a chance to see I'm using a virgin client to play this game though that's the problem okay first enemies turned up it's a chi new it's got fairly thin armor rounds out yep first shots are hit for 142 two critical hits he's lining them up for the next shot waiting for the reload and there we go rounds out and the second shot was a hit as well. Now he's changing position just slightly, mainly so he can actually get shots on this Chinu if he pulls back, but also to fox the enemy arty to stop him getting uh, counter battery. The enemy arty is an M41 HMC, so he has got the entire range of the battlefield, and if he placed himself in the right spot, he should be able to get a shot into that corner. So M5 Multitronic unit is trying to prevent that from happening by appearing elsewhere and shooting from another spot. Nice hit! 137 on the T-3485. Now, the Bishop actually designed and built on the hull of a Valentine tank, one of the tanks that was actually produced throughout the entirety of World War II. Another great hit! 200 hit points this time. It was actually a bit of a stopgap because the, the British RT up until that point Mostly been fixed guns, uh, not SPGs, and of course that meant that it was difficult to keep up with the uh, advancing troops and tanks. So the British needed an artillery piece that they could actually rely on, and until they got their own design of artillery, which of course was the Sexton, and a nice shot there on the M6, until the Sexton was built by the Canadians, they uh, modified 149 Valentine tanks and turn them into bishops. Now it did bring removal of the turret and instead they put a casement on which is fairly thin. The ammo very thin indeed and the ammo and uh, the, the armor of the engine deck is very thin as well. That's the weak spot of this RT. But uh, other than that the Valentine, the bishop actually retains some of the features of the Valentine in that it has very good frontal armor. Nice shot. Almost got the T-3485 that time with 187. Yes, by actually having that heavy armor, it means that if an enemy tank auto aims onto him, then there's a very good chance he might actually be able to uh, withstand the shots through his hardened armor. Because the shots will go straight into the Valentine tank part of the vehicle. The, the bit that's weak is the casement around the actual howitzer. And unfortunately, when they made the Bishop, they actually made it uh, with the gun not at the correct angle for use. So whenever you wanted to fire a Bishop, if you want to extend the range, you have to park it on an increased slope. So it was the gun was pointing up into the sky and he's got his first kill. He's killed the VK-3001H. Nicely done. Now, it is one of the uh, artists that is incredibly accurate. You can see by parking on that upslope there, he actually shortened his range, or rather increased his range when it came to firing, but he decreased his ability to get enemy tanks that were closer to him. But he did take out the T-3485 by going back down the slope, so it was a slightly flatter. Now, the, uh, the bishop couldn't carry as many shells as uh, it needed, so usually you'll see photographs of bishops wandering around the battlefield carrying a trailer. And as any expert like David Fletcher will tell you, uh, tanks and trailers don't really mix. Mainly because the trailer ha normally has uh, wheels 
and a tank normally has tracks and when a tank turns yeah the, the trailer doesn't turn so well so if the tank turns sharply you've got problems nice shot there got 161 off the easy eight and he's out the game in fact actually it was uh 89 off the easy eight but he got the 161 for damage assist And another nice hit. Now, they were built during 1942 to 1943, so they did see action out in the Western Desert. And after that, they act. Oh, we got a kill! Now, I think he might have set that M6 alight, and it burned up because it didn't appear immediately as a kill. It appeared a little later, so I suspect that he managed to set light to it. Now, you may see sign, or pictures rather, of bishops wandering in pairs, little batteries of them. Um, they would go together as a pair, and you might see them pulling their trailers as they go up the uh, spine of Italy towards the German troops. They were kept in use throughout the war, but uh, after they were built um, from 42 onwards, but uh, obviously they were replaced by the sexton which was a purpose-built RT with 25 pounder gun, whereas this thing had the 4.5-inch howitzer. In fact, the, the stock gun's the 25 pounder. But uh, yes, 450 alpha is quite good. It's uh, similar in many ways to the 410 alpha you actually get off the Fifi, the 105FH18B2. And they both got, uh, well, they both got very accurate shots because they can dial in very very tightly on the enemy to get good hits now he could take this t78 out with one shot if he can get a direct hit onto the cockpit he gets a hit for 157 but i think he hit the hull instead but you can see he's reloading almost as fast as a fifi would and he's lining him up for a shot fires one in and yes another big hit 240 but unfortunately the t78 took out ostriv m4257 he fires a quick snap in. This is it. But going for the T67. Now he could get that T67 if he can put the shell in the right place. We're down to three versus two. Now he fires around in. Oh, he got him. He got the T67. It landed next to his engine deck or at the back of it. It splashed him to death. And now he's going for the T78 the same. Oh, he got him as well. That's four kills. And that's the shot that wins the game. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was an ace tanker game from M5 Multitronic unit in the Bishop. He managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he managed 14 in that one. He got a fighter badge because he took down four enemy vehicles, and he got four exactly, as well as getting a high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game. And he was literally, he was punishing those enemy tanks in that valley. Uh, any of those tanks who were sitting around there, they were going to get hit. And he's got this unique style. Um, which obviously we don't approve that you actually pull away from watching what the vehicle does, but he actually does stick around to see where the shell goes, whereas some people will pull away after they shoot and you don't get to see the shell hit the target at all. At least M5 Multitronic gets, lets us have a look to see where the shell went. And yes, he did get some lovely kills. Let's have a look at team score. The highest damage in the game was 2,312 hit points, and that was 20% of the enemy hit pool, so he picked up the high caliber. The second highest damage was that T-78 with his 90mm gun. He managed to get 2,058 hit points, and the third highest damage went to the 17-pounder gun on the Achilles with 1,755. When it came to kills, he had the second highest because the T-78 managed five kills, M5 Multitronic unit got four and three kills went to the Achilles on his own team and also to the Achilles on the enemy team. And when it came to base XP, it was the Churchill that did the best with 912. He was the one who went off down the town. Uh, 910 went to M5 Multitronic unit and 801 went to the strip M4257, who unfortunately got taken up by that T78 at the end. He fired 25 rounds in that game, got 13 direct hits on the enemy and one penetration on them as well. Now, can we see which one he actually penned? Well, it was the T-78. He actually got a hit uh, which actually took him out. I think it may have been that last shot that actually killed him. 
that was a penetrating shot and had took everything left that he had remaining. He also got 19 splashes on the enemy as well, uh, 2,312 hit points, of which 1,939 were at more than 300 meters. So he was fairly close to that T-3485 when he actually took him out. Seven enemy vehicles were damaged, four were killed, 513 hit points of damage assistance, and he earned 26,620 credits on a free-to-play account. And after resupply of ammunition and, uh, well, there was no consumables as well, he actually ended up with a profit of 20,370 credits. 910 base XP times 3 for the first victory took away 2,730 experience points altogether. So a very profitable game, nice steady work as he said. All it requires is a keen eye to be able to put the shell on and let it settle before you fire. And if you can do that, then you can put the shells almost into the cockpit of enemy vehicles and blow them up with one round. I've seen it done so many times. I've done it myself, for that matter. The Bishop is very much, um, it's a very short range arty. You have to get fairly close to the enemy if you want to get good hits on them. So you are going into danger. But if you play it correctly, you can rack up a huge amount of damage, just like M5 Multitronic Unit did, and win the game for your team. Here's the armor profile for the Bishop. You can see it actually has the Valentine armor at the front of the vehicle. Yeah, it's quite thick, actually. If you're auto-aiming on, you go for that thick, heavy stuff there, right where the driver's ports are. And it's also got fairly heavy armor at the front of the vehicle as well. It's impacted armor 60 millimeters, but it's actually coming out of effective armor of uh, 94, uh, 71, depending on which way or which angle you're firing from. You can see even up to the just below the casement, it's 60 millimeters strong. So it's very difficult to penetrate. 30 millimeters, very well angled there. So a shell is more than likely going to experience 60 millimeters overall. And for a tier 5 tank, yes, it's more than likely those shells probably won't penetrate if they're armor piercing, but they might if they're APCR. The casement is actually still fairly thin, though. It's 30 millimeters. And because it's rather flat-sided, it's much easier to get your shells through. If you look at the side of the vehicle, you can see it's heavy down below, 50 millimeters, but the casement is 30. And round the back, you can see it's very easy to penetrate the armor over the engine deck, which is only 17 millimeters thick. In fact, it's 10 millimeters where uh, just over the top of the engine, and that's mainly to uh, because it, and it's corrugated to release the heat from the engine. They didn't want uh, the the heat to uh, or the engine to cook inside the vehicle um, in fact that was one of the good features that the russians seemed to like because they received quite a few valentines and of course the heat that was coming off the engine was quite useful to them because the the troops could sit on the back and they get toasted bums from the um uh from all the heat that was actually coming off the tank so they quite liked the valentine tank because of course it would keep them warm as it took them into battle Anyway, that's the armor profile. If we look at the uh, live model, you can see, yes, it's pretty hard armor all the way around. In fact, showing red all the way. Uh, but in fact, actual, actually, it's easier to fire into the casement than anywhere else. And if you can, you get behind them because that's the green area. That's where the armor is thin. So if you aim for the green areas, you should be okay. Let's have a quick look at the modules. Let's bring that up. There we go. Okay, we've got the driver up front in the center, and you can see there's a big ammo store in the center of the tank, just underneath where the turret would normally be. The howitzer's got the gunner on the right-hand side, the commander's on the left-hand side, the loader's sitting behind the gunner, so it's a three-man um, um, a three-man casement. Now, the driver would normally get out when they're actually, after uh, they settled and uh, parked themselves to start firing, he would actually go around the back of the vehicle and he would take the ammo out of the ammo boxes on the trailer and he would place the shells and the charges on the engine deck. The loader would then pick them up and put them into the howitzer. There was two ammo racks inside the casement, but they were normally the shells that were used up fairly quickly and that gave more room inside the casement for the crew to work. But it was the driver who would actually then feed the shells to the loader who would then put them in the breech and they placed them on the engine deck beforehand. They didn't worry about the engine deck still being too hot because it wouldn't cook the shells off, but it would certainly uh, warm the shells up before they were fired. 
The engine's unusual. It's only got a fuel tank on one side of the vehicle. The, right in the center is the engine and transmission's going to the rear wheel drive uh, sprockets. So that's where all the modules are on the Bishop. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.